Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, joining our time series database for SDM32 MCU devices. My name is uh, Sasan Montessori, and uh, I am founder and uh, president at ETIA, and uh, have the pleasure to be with uh, Luik Choset, who is a senior marketing manager at uh, SDM Microelectronics and uh, Ryan Phillips, uh, who is a database architect at ETIA. Uh, today, uh, we will uh, have a really exciting agenda with regards to data management on SDM32 platforms for you. And uh, we also have prepared a gift that uh, it includes uh, our um, workshop attendance, which is at no cost. Uh, so the code, the promotion code will be available for people who have an interest to learn further about our technology in two weeks. So uh, this webinar is for uh, device manufacturers that they are building embedded systems with microcontrollers and uh, need to sense and collect and protect data. And data for these embedded systems typically originate from sensors where a massive amount of data is produced and analysis is required to understand the real state, uh, real time state of the uh, system. Uh, so the device can act on its own. Uh, these embedded systems uh, have different requirements. Um, some need to uh, store information over time for running queries. Uh, some need for sampling one or hundreds of sensors data with really high frequency. Um, some others, it's necessary to uh, store configuration data, which uh, needs to be periodically updated and uh, protected from uh, um, unexpected power failure. So today we will share with you how ETIDB IoT software uh, for STM32 MCUs empower your application to monitor, collect, uh, organize, and reliably store substantial amount of IoT data. Um, our, our solution is uh, purely for device real-time data processing and the data management at the edge uh, with which uh, sensors uh, and devices can ingest, analyze, and act on real-time data. Um, you will also learn how with ETIDB IoT API functions, your device can find average or look for certain pattern in data or group things together from different sensors or compare values on continuous basis. Uh, we show you how ETIA database actually uh, as an refinery that transform crude raw data uh, into valuable information as fresh data streams in SDM32 devices and uh, share with you the major benefit that ETIA database and SDM32 platforms, including saving bandwidth, benefiting from you know, having the data on the edge without sharing and you know, how you can accommodate, reduce your cost uh, when you have the data on the device, you know, then you own the data and uh, you can minimize the cost. So uh, at the end, you will also see a real demonstration. This is the live demonstration that uh, highlights our data processing and data management offering for SDM32 devices. And uh, we will open the panel at the end for answering questions. So uh, you may be wondering, uh, how do I know whether embedding a database, a time series database like ETIDB IoT software 
for my SDM32 platforms, MCUs, development environment uh, can help me process or manage the data. Is this really helpful? Is it really for me? So there are a few questions that if you say yes to any of them, you will be able to tremendously benefit from our software database and data management, data processing and STM32 when you are building IoT systems. And these questions are, does your device need to sense remotely, um, collect and manage a large volume of raw data? Uh, so uh, you can collect a part of the large volume of data on MCU platform that's valuable to you, not uh, all the raw data comes in. So uh, the other question here is that what happens when your IoT edge-based device application disconnects from other systems uh, and uh, there is no connectivity? Um, are you able to communicate still? Or um, do you still want to capture the data when there is a disconnect? Uh, the other question is, do you worry that your device application may experience power failure? So what happened when there's a power failure? Do you want to make sure real-time data gets uh, updated and data is not corrupted? Um, or are you concerned about the security as data continuously leaves the device? So is the Data privacy important for your system? Uh, do you want to keep the most of the data on the device and only share on demand uh, with other system the information or data that's collected by the device? Uh, do you need to access live device data for diagnostics and debugging purposes? So if you have answered yes to any of these, then definitely our uh, database for uh, IoT systems, it's, a, it's a, gonna be valuable for you on STM32 platforms. So before we go further to our software and introduce you to the magic that you can really do with that, let us hear about STM32 platforms. And uh, these are really powerful MCUs. Elegancy of these can really bring some coolness and uniqueness to your development. Okay, so let me uh, give you an overview of uh, our STM32 portfolio. So uh, basically, we have uh, several series of STM32 microcontrollers and microprocessors. So uh, the STM32 family offers many devices with high performance, real-time capabilities, digital signal processing, low power operation and connectivity. So among the latest introduced STM32 series, you can select, for instance, if you go to the top right, the STM32 MP1 or the STM32 H7, if you really need a high performance, or you can select the STM32 G4 for motor control or digital power application, STM32 G0, for entry cost. The last one we introduced on the market, the STM32 U5 for low power with more security. Or in the wireless uh, series, you have STM32 WB and STM32 WL supporting RF protocols such as Bluetooth Low Net Energy, Zigbee, LoRa, wireless MBUS. Um, among, beside all these uh, silicone microcontrollers and microprocessors, we are also offering a very rich ecosystem and solutions. So you may find all of them on the ST web page. So on the right side of the slide, you can see the complete ecosystem, including STM32 Cube software and evaluation tools. You have also uh, the offering in terms of security with STM32 Trust, the made for STM32 label, and a large panel of partners offering solution. On the bottom, you can see all the solution we are also offering uh, with a USB, functional safety, motor control, 
graphic user interface, and so on. So all the devices uh, surrounded in red on this slide are supported by time series database from ITTIA. Next. So the SEM32 ecosystem is continuously growing. So the SEM32 cube on the left side is a software solution for SEM32 microcontrollers and microprocessors. It was created for designers interested in a free comprehensive development environment. It can also be used to integrate your STM32 software in other uh, environments, such as Kyle MDK or IAR Embedded Workbench. STM32 Cube is really a combination of software tools and embedded software libraries. So software tools address each step of your uh, development cycle with configuration first, development, programming, and monitoring. And software bricks enable advanced functionalities in STM32 devices and also cover external components thanks to STM32 cube expansions. In the middle, you have the hardware offering. So for all STM32 series, you will find uh, different categories of boards. On the left, you have the affordable Nucleo, which is the, the most simple board for flexible prototyping. And on the right side, you have the full evaluation board. Uh, but last but not least, you can rely on many online resources, uh, trainings, massive open online courses, videos, and a network of partners to help you at any stage of your STM32 project, from evaluation or prototyping until design and production. Um, with ETIDB IoT, and uh, STM32, uh, you can store data temporarily or you can have the data for long term. Uh, and uh, the goal here is to be able to go back to this data and run queries. Uh, we architected ETIDB IoT to process and manage data locally on STM32 platforms. Uh, this is a very robust and uh, a database that's built for devices, STM32 devices, that they are operating in a harsh environment. And they generally get installed in where, you know, the field technician go there once or twice a year. And it's important to be able to, you know, remotely accomplish the job. So it's a very fast data stream pre-processing and offers you to take advantage of non-volatile memory such as EMMC and other flashes where your device needs to uh, consume less power. So when you embed ETIDB IoT on your MCU platform, you are empowering the STM devices for real data analytics and uh, you benefit from supporting concurrent reads and write, and also have different indexing to configure and optimize data access and uh, query performances. Uh, remote sensing is the accusation of data about the trend without making, uh, making a physical contact with object where there is no possibility for on-site observations. And, uh, uh, there is a device or many devices that, uh, you know, you deploy in the field and they're all connected and they all have, uh, you know, working with sensors and they must remotely sense the environment and report the events um, such as abnormality and they all need to run uh, real time. So for such a system, data needs to be analyzed, filtered, and uh, there is a high insertion data throughput in real time requirement, such as, uh, you know, give, getting an, uh, for example, when you want to get an aggregate, when you want to run joint queries. So everything must be done really fast. And uh, 
this is the purpose of you know having a database that can meet this requirement so uh, we empower the mcus to manage time series data so device can collect data they can keep track of the most recent information to um, you know often uh, for logging full history of data that uh, comes uh, from different sensors and um, ETIDB IoT allows uh, uh, MCU devices to keep track of data at any given time and uh, gain the ability to observe and uh, store the data trend from variety of uh, sensors uh, starting uh, from a same timestamp or different timestamp when the data arrives the database is able to collect it and organize them and give you tables in an organized fashion so you can make sense of the data. So with ETR database and the STM32 device, you can uh, see, for example, what was the value of uh, several sensors at a given time, um, organize the data in an exact order, or where um, it was uh, randomly collected and analyze the data from different perspectives. So you can combine database on the um, timestamp and find the information that uh, you are interested. Uh, there are um, occasions that uh, MCU devices need to store configuration data, uh, which are generally a small amount. Uh, data is stored as a collection of a key value pairs in which a, a key serve as a unique identifier. So uh, developers are seeking ways to safety store and update data so application can access it in a later time uh, with low latency and uh, does not have to wait for information to arrive. Uh, so for these scenarios, uh, inserts are less and updates are more important. Uh, um, example for uh, this kind of scenario includes storing data about uh, low and high temperature or storing information about uh, system pressure or storing information about RPM change from time to time. So these are all uh, the empowerment that you get uh, from the database system. So um, basically the value is giving the device the authority, the power to sense, organize and store the data. And when there is a requirement to act, whatever you know the purpose is for the action, the device should autonomously make it on its own. So our database on uh, with STM32 device offers you to stream and process real time um, run uh, real time data you can run continuous query fresh real time and define the pipeline for the fresh data that is uh, arriving and uh, store it in a time series storage and so you can dynamically add new sensors and um, you as because as you are working with your systems you want to be able to you know expand and you want the database to be able to scale and it offer you the same performance so as you are adding more sensors the system is still the database is very stable this this, this the database is still gives you the uh, performance that you ex expect and um, basically the time series data processing and data management it's getting done on your microcontrollers and uh, you can achieve um, really a high performance query. You can um, write thousands of data points per second per sensors and um, your system is uh, capable of uh, empowering the data management and uh, data processing. Uh, um, one of the important thing for for application, I mean, there are, there are two sides. One is the business side and one is the technical side. From the business perspective, you want to make sure that the components and hardware that you're selecting, they come together well and uh, making sure that everything work uh, uh, as you expect when you are using the database, you're using the operating system, you're using the compiler, etc. So as you will build your devices, you know that one of the major challenges that causes 
uh, taking products to markets late or even running out of the budget is the integration of software and hardware for uh, building uh, MCU applications. So ETA and SD uh, Microelectronics Partnership will greatly benefit you to focus on your application and uh, have the ability to reach out to experts for data management and their MCU hardware and make sure that, you know, you can benefit from this tremendous amount of uh, knowledge and expertise and software that's available to you. So when you select ETIA and STM32, there are real-time operating systems, compilers, IDEs that they are supported and you can just simply benefit because they are tested and they work together and you can build your application. And um, from the database perspective, there are some data management um, parameters such as available ROM and RAM for the database to run on the device that uh, um, you need to be informed. Um, our time series database engine requires about 150 kilobyte of ROM program flash and about 50k RAM. And uh, that depends on the workload uh, that you are also having because you can store hundreds of sensors data over hydrate and you can read the data with a very low latency and high throughput as your application require you to um, export a uh, large volume of timestamp data. So um, your device storage media that is also you are bringing to the picture, it's going to determine how much data you know you can keep as you are collecting the data. So um, with ETL uh, database, we support a variety of development environment for STM32, including the Cube IDE, Free RTOS operating system, Azure ThreadX, as well as you know other RTOSs that are desired. We have customers that you know they require us to port on their platform. We work with them to do that. So our database is compatible with GNU tool chains, um, IR compiler, and uh, various file systems are supported. Um, as well as, you know, you can write the data into raw storage made media. Uh, we provide C and C++ API for embedded uh, developers so they can minimize the overhead. Um, there are various markets that can definitely, you know, with the evolution of IoT, benefit from our solution and we have our eyes on them. So when you build your autonomous system, whether that relates to IoT, whether it relates to medical devices or automotive or air and watering monitoring, there is a situation that explosive growth of data needs attention. Raw data needs to be converted into valuable information on high sampling frequency and there are a variety of markets that can really benefit and have already started benefited from our total solution. So before we go to the detail, let's hear about ST microelectronics markets and you can see how compatible our both companies are in offering solutions to different markets. Yes, indeed, if you look at the, the ST strategic objectives, so we have, we address four main markets. Uh, so first automotive, industrial, personal electronics, communication equipment, and computers. STM32 devices are not qualified for automotive, but they address all other industrial and consumer markets. We have already been delivering billions of STM32 devices for a multitude of different applications, including factory automation, sensors, graphic HMI, motor control, digital power, IoT devices, connected objects, wearables, meters, medical monitoring, and artificial intelligence now also. So indeed, uh, all, all markets except automotive can be addressed uh, with the STM32. With regards to the partnership that ETL and ST Microelectronics uh, are, have launched, uh, we, we don't really can offer uh, on one area, and that's the 
making the world smarter. And we are really offering the solution that can help you to in, inject intelligence to your system, to your devices. And, uh, you know, different markets can definitely, you know, benefit from this. And you will see some of these things, whether you are building application robotics for industrial automation to increase the productivity, or whether you're making a small medical devices to diagnose their real-time symptoms or a store configuration data, or you are in the, you know, build the smart building so you can put eye on the monitors and secure the building, uh, whether you, know, you are in the utility or uh, power smart grids for building smart meters. Um, if, you are, if you want to build variable to connect body and monitor health, uh, um, you know, these are these, this, this are, these are the places that tremendously have started, you know, benefiting from our total solution. Um, you know, there are remote control systems such as drone that they need to be middle of nowhere and they need to act on their own to control. So you can empower the drone to control and act from anywhere. And if you're building environmental, uh, you know, uh, environmental uh, applications that you want sensors to uh, inform you when there is a fire, when there is, you know, a gas that has a leakage or anything that, you know, needs immediate sensing attention, that is the fantastic solution. So for now, uh, what we will do, we will uh, share with you um, a general perspective demonstration, because as you know, um, ST Microelectronic has uh, 18 different categories of uh, uh, MCUs, STM32 MCUs, and uh, there are thousands of part numbers. So for us to come and say, okay, we support all of them, that's not, that's not the real story because some of these uh, uh, devices are really, really a small footprint and they don't have any room for application, but we support most of them. And uh, uh, there are some of them that they have, you know, more freedom with memory and they're less, but the demonstration that we prepared for you showed you in general, how in real time data can be collected and how you can do online data processing, save bandwidth cost, and basically sense and collect and analyze real time information. Okay, thank you, Sasan. So um, as Sasan mentioned, we are going to be running a demonstration on STM32 hardware. Um, this is uh, going to show you how the uh, data can be captured onto flash storage media on a device and uh, permanently stored there until the data can be um, exported or as, as long as there's enough space so that the data can be uh, queried and accessed at uh, various times. So the goal of um, this demonstration is to uh, simulate capturing data that would normally be captured over the course of an hour from dozens and dozens of different sensors. And so we have a um, program that uh, simulates producing data from one timestamp to the next, collecting the data in real time, and it randomly shuffles the sensors that are capturing data because in the real world, the data is not necessarily going to come into the device in a consistent order. So we're giving the data into the database um, uh, nearly in the, the original timestamp order, but our system allows you to have the data come in a little bit out of order. You're just calling our API to put data for a given time series at a timestamp and a certain value. And that information gets ingested um, onto the disk and then becomes available for uh, various queries. So for example, if we do a full export of the data um, and just print out the first 10 lines of that, we get this block of information. And I can just paste this into a spreadsheet to see what this uh, 
benchmark was generating. We have uh, various measurements that are capturing data over time, but not every measurement is necessarily present at every timestamp. And despite that, we've stored that information on the disk in a compact format that allows us to reconstruct it like this whenever we need to export the data in the order by the, the timestamps that were given by the application and ordered by the uh, sensor names so that um, we can uh, very quickly get that data out in a um, sensible format for use by um, other systems. But we can also directly query individual measurements and say, let's get all of the data for measurement five from uh, one timestamp to another. And that's handled with a um, repeated call to um, a query function that just loads those timestamps and values into um, arrays provided by the application that um, allows you to very easily uh, get the timestamps and values correlated with one another on this measurement. Um, the uh, benchmark also uh, removes um, old data to make room for new information because these devices often have very limited storage capacity. So it's important to be able to reclaim that space on a continuous basis, removing the, the oldest data first. And then of course, we need to be able to um, combine together the information to get this, this block. And um, that's accomplished with a um, series of functions that allow us to specify a query and then read that query in smaller chunks, making use of the limited memory resources of the device very effectively. And so the um, idea is that you should be able to do all of this uh, reading and writing to the database in um, parallel from multiple threads. So if you have um, an RTOS like FreeRTOS or um, Azure RTOS ThreadX on the device, you can um, very easily simply um, open a connection to the database from each thread and have uh, various tasks that are concurrently ingesting data remo um, and removing the old information, as well as um, joining together the, uh, the data to do an export. So you can see on um, this rather modest um, 80 megahertz ST micro device, um, we were able to ingest data points, 20,000 uh, data points per second um, onto persistent storage media and reclaim that memory at 80,000 points per second. So uh, once your system fills up, you're going to be able to continue collecting data very rapidly. And uh, finally, if you need to export that data, um, it's uh, very well optimized so that you can get that data out in the uh, kind of block that we um, show here. You can convert that to other formats like JSON or XML, um, if that's what your application needs. And that export can be completed uh, very rapidly in this on this board um, with uh, uh, the storage media um, 120,000 data points per second. And depending on your environment, you'll get um, different results, but this is uh, what we're targeting with this, um, with this example. So as you can see, um, we're able to help application developers to store, organize, and query the information um, with APIs that are tailored to the specific requirements of a time series storage. Now, in addition to uh, just storing time series data uh, from the application, we also have a stream processing technology that allows you to um, directly query real-time data um, obtained from uh, various data sources. So for example, um, many ST micro uh, electronics developments boards come with sensor components that provide various information such as temperature and pressure and humidity as environmental data. Um, there are sensors with um, uh, location and 
uh, magnetic uh, detection capability. And um, these sensors can all be uh, mapped to what we call IoT streams in the database engine. And then uh, these just have um, data that's being produced, which you can uh, query by running a uh, continuous uh, query on the live data that's um, produced by the, the target board. And so um, you can apply various um, rules to your uh, statements, such as say we're only interested in data where the temperature exceeds a um, certain threshold. So if we set the filter to greater than 30 degrees, then we only get um, those results back. You can use this to monitor for various conditions on the device, because uh, this query is sent to and processed on the device itself, and the, only the results are sent back to the uh, client on the network. So this, this is a technology that works on more advanced boards that have communications capabilities and a little bit more resources. Um, but you can uh, use this to run um, a number of different queries, such as if you're interested in a 10 second running average of the temperatures that have been collected, that can be calculated uh, using a continuous query like this. You can also um, apply uh, various formula. Uh, for example, if we want to calculate the uh, density of a material from its temperature and pressure of, of a gas, for example, um, we can use the ideal gas law and calculate the um, volume per mole of the, um, of the uh, material and have that again be continuously updated for, for use by the application. But these calculations are all performed on the device itself. So in this way, um, you can take this information, you can take the results of these and store it into a database on the device um, and have a lot of control over how you map the data from sensors um, that uh, originate on these various devices and make that available um, both to be stored on the device and also to um, other devices on the network. Okay, as uh, you noticed here, uh, we are able to offer uh, real data uh, processing and data management in a time series fashion uh, on MCU platforms and STM32 devices. So as I promised for those of you who attend our webinar and registered for this event, we have a gift. Uh, we have a workshop coming up in about two weeks. And uh, during this half a day online registration, which is typically we charge $300 per developer, you can become very familiar with the databases and MCU's offering. And this event, it's offered to you at no cost. So all you need to do use the events at you know write to events at eta.com and request a promotion code. And if you want information about this workshop, you need to visit ittia.com slash MCU hyphen IOT hyphen workshop. So this is the place that you can spend couple hours, two or three hours with our experts and gain weeks of knowledge. And we have been very successful with such an event, but generally people pay to register. And because of your interest, we offer this to you at no cost. So if you also need to work with us and you know build systems and uh, learn about SDM32 and ETIDB, Go to the download page, request the product. Uh, as I said, you know, uh, ST Microelectronic has uh, thousands of product lines, but we will work with you to find out what is your exact needs, what are your exact requirements, 
and uh, we can work together to uh, make sure that you will learn about the total value that ETIA database and ST microelectronics bring to the table. So at this stage, uh, I am going to open the panels and uh, ask uh, your questions. So if you have any questions, um, you can uh, type it in and uh, we will be have, uh, happy to answer that. Times are limited, but we do have few questions here that uh, we will answer. And if there is anything else that's not answered, simply write to info at etia.com and we will answer that to you. But for now, let's uh, go to the first question. Uh, when will the STM32U5 discovery kit for IoT node becomes available? So uh, the STM32U5 uh, uh, production, uh, uh, as far as I know, was uh, publicly announced last week. And uh, ETIA is also in the process of, you know, offering support for this uh, new uh, evolutionary technology. And uh, uh, ST Microelectronics uh, is going to have the boards available to its distributor channels. Uh, so uh, you can uh, work uh, with them, uh, visit stm.com and uh, get the boards that you require and uh, it has a discovery kit and it's, it's a pretty exciting technology actually you know during the support process we were pretty impressed with the, uh, what you can gain with stm 32 u5 and the etia db database and the other question that we have here is uh, um, uh, somebody asked about the uh, sample database uh, on GitHub. Uh, we don't have ETA DB IoT will be introduced to the market soon. And uh, if, if information about that is already available on our website. So if you really want to look at the contained database, um, just uh, simply visit the uh, evaluation page or just write an email to support at ETA.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at ittia.com and uh, you say, okay, we need to look at the database uh, samples and uh, we will assign an engineer to provide that to you and we'll make sure that you, know, you will uh, get what you need. Uh, another question here is, um, I will pass this to Ryan, what backend engine do you use for database? Is it open source or proprietary? Yeah, um, the database engine we use for um, our uh, database and our time series is a proprietary um, storage engine that we've designed specifically for embedded devices to work within the limited memory constraints there. Um, another question is uh, how difficult it is to run ETIA database on desired uh, MCUs such as STM32. Actually, uh, you know, we are relatively familiar and becoming more and more engaged with ST microelectronics and supporting their, their, their environment. These are pretty sophisticated, intelligent MCUs, and uh, um, it shouldn't be difficult combination of our expertise that we offer you and uh, your uh, know-how with your application should be able to manage this uh, and uh, bring the data processing and data management to your system. And the last question is, does ETIA provide MCU related trainings? Um, yes, you know, the workshop that I suggested to you, it's the best way. This is a really, really important event and you can attend that uh, at no cost. And uh, um, this is going to be really informative about the power that database brings to your uh, MCU platforms. And uh, you know, if you need the longer term training, we also provide you know five days that you can register and you can go through the complete details, which is uh, also available. So um, we have uh, received uh, uh, another question that we will answer that, and uh, that is, what is the underlying file system? 
is it uh, compatible with the life FT? So I will pass this to Ryan. Ryan, please go ahead. So um, our product runs on top of a variety of different file systems. Um, we have a portability layer that um, just requires you to uh, be able to write to a block device. Um, our product always writes to the storage in uh, full database page size blocks and uh, reads them back the same way. So any device that can um, store information as uh, large blocks of data can be supported by, um, by our product. Yeah, generally, database uh, our database is available for uh, you know popular um, real-time operating systems such as uh, uh, FreeRTOS, uh, such as uh, Azure Redux, and there are others that uh, you know we are supporting as well. So, um, if you have uh, different needs that uh, needs attention, we can definitely work with you and. Uh, um, we are uh, we have architected the product such that you know supporting new real time operating systems, um, it's not that complex. Uh, so there are other questions, but we are running out of time. So please simply um, send them to info at etia.com and uh, we will uh, answer them for you. Meanwhile, uh, uh, please make sure you benefit from this workshop, which has have been very very successful and. Uh, at the end, uh, we want to thank all of you for uh, attending this uh, session and uh, hope you all greatly benefited from that. Thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful days and evenings.